Hi, this is Sam Hendrick from Bentley Systems and welcome back. This is the basics about MicroStation Connect Edition. And in this video, what we're going to talk about is graphical input. How do we input into the computer, into MicroStation? We're going to talk about the mouse in a MicroStation. We use all three buttons to do things. And the keyboard. We're going to see how that can be used to bring up tools. And we're going to see how we can combine the two of them together. And that's going to be your plus one in this video. So let's go ahead and get started. Let's jump into the file. Okay, in this video, what we're going to be talking about is the mouse and the buttons on the mouse and some mouse keyboard combinations. So let's go ahead and open our file up. This one's called mouse and keyboard. Now in MicroStation, like other programs, the mouse on your desk is used to control the position of the cursor on the screen. In MicroStation, the buttons on the mouse have specific functions. The left button is called data. The right button is referred to as reset. And left and right buttons pressed simultaneously is what we call tentative or snap. You can also look at it that way. So the left button, the most obvious thing is picking tools. So if I come up, I can pick an icon that puts me in the tool. The other things it can do is pick elements when you're in a command that is looking to identify an element. So we're going to go to the copy tool. I'm going to come up here, select that. And we'll zoom in a little bit here and we're going to pan over. Now, my job here is to select this line to copy it. Now, if I move my cursor and let's take a moment and talk about the cursor. Right now, my cursor on the screen, it's a plus sign with a circle. That circle is an area of probability. When I go to pick an element, if there are other elements inside that circle, when I do a data, I can cycle through them by pressing reset. Let me demonstrate. So my job is to get this line, but if I move my cursor here, there are four lines whose endpoints are coincident. So I'm just going to data at the end of any one of the lines. It's the same point in space. If it identifies the incorrect line, that's not the one I want. I just cycle through them by hitting reset, right button on my mouse. So if I hit reset, you can see then it cycles through to the next element that was inside that circle. So then I'm going to go ahead and place that down. I'm going to do a data. And then at this point, I can continue making copies if I wanted to. Or if I'm done, I can hit reset. Now, doing a reset does not cancel the command. It takes me back, in this case, to the beginning of the command. Right now, it's asking me to make a copy, an additional copy. I'm going to hit reset, right button. Now it's back to identify element to copy. Now, that's true in a lot of commands in MicroStation. Now, the next thing we're going to look at is tentative. If I just move my cursor out here in open space and do a tentative, that's pressing left and right button simultaneously. That's the default out of the box. What you're seeing is a dotted plus sign. The dotted part means that it didn't snap to an element. So I'm going to hit reset. And let's say I wanted to get this element right here. I wanted to copy it. I'm still in copy. And I want to copy it by its endpoint down here, but I don't want to mess around with all these other elements at the endpoint. So I can move my cursor near the endpoint like this and then do a tentative. What you'll see at the end of the line is the tentative plus sign, but it's not dotted. So I'm going to do a data to accept that. And now I'm copying that line by its endpoint. So doing a tentative, it is an extra step, but sometimes it can help for clarity in what you're doing. So I'm going to go ahead and copy this to the other end, data. And again, I'll do a reset. Now, the next thing I want to show you is a keyboard mouse combination. So we're done with the mouse. Let's talk about the keyboard and the mouse. Now, let's say I wanted to draw in electrical lines between these power poles. So I'm going to go to my Play Smart Line tool, come up here. And I'm going to start my first electrical line at this power pole here, do a data. And then I'm going to come up to the next one and I'm going to do a data and another data. And again, I'm placing this along. And what I've realized after I place this third one is, oh no, my attributes are not correct for the feature that I'm drawing. I'm drawing an electrical line, an overhead electrical. Instead of me hitting reset and then undoing and going and setting my attributes correctly or finishing the line and going back after the fact and changing the attributes, what I'm going to do is I'm going to match the attributes of the element 
down below the overhead electrical by doing an alt data. That's alt on my keyboard, moving my cursor over the element and doing a data. See how I just matched the attributes in the middle of my command. I didn't have to cancel my command or anything like that. I can just alt data to match. So I'm gonna hit reset and there's my electrical lines matching an existing element. Now alt data works with a lot of things, but one of the things that it doesn't do out of the box is match, for example, cells. If I'm placing a cell, I'm gonna zoom in down here, I'm gonna illustrate that it doesn't do that out of the box and then I'm gonna show you how to make it so it does. So I'm going to go to my place cell tool, I'm gonna to come up here. What I'd like to do is place another manhole cover. There's one right here, okay? My active cell is the power pole, but what I'd like to do is change my active cell to be the manhole cover. So I'm gonna do an alt data on that cell and what you see is my active cell is still a power pole. So alt data can be configured to match more things about an element. So what I'm gonna do is hit reset, go back to my file in my back office, go down to settings, and then I'm gonna to go to button assignments. Now under button assignments here, you see where it says alt plus data, alt on the keyboard, data is the left button. I'm gonna select this. Right now it's configured to execute a command called match attributes from cursor. I wanna change this to match element from cursor. So I'm gonna double click on that and we're gonna change that to match element from cursor. I hit enter. That reconfigures that mouse keyboard combination, match element, save, return to my drawing. Now I'm gonna go back to my place cell tool my active cell is power pole. I'm going to alt data on that cell, the manhole cover, and that makes it the active cell. So that's alt data, and that's a keyboard and mouse combination. One of the other things I'm gonna show you is how to get quick access to your tools. One of the things I love about my Extrusion Connect is by hitting the space bar right at my cursor, I'm going to see three rows. The first and third row will open up secondary icons. For example, if I click on this first icon, this will bring up my attributes where I can change my active settings. I'm gonna left click to dismiss that. Space bar again. The third row, like the first row, brings up a secondary dialog. So I'm gonna click place text. And here now I have my text tools here. So I'm gonna, again, I'm gonna left click in an open area. Space bar, the middle row, that will bring up discrete access to my tools. So I can click on, let's say copy element, puts me right in the copy element tool. So that is very powerful and it also can be customized, but that's another video. So the other thing I'm gonna show you is a keyboard mouse combination, shift right click. This brings up my view controls. I have things like window area, zoom out, fit. So let's say I'm gonna select fit. It fits my view. Let's say I wanted to do a view previous. Shift, right click, there's view previous. So I can do that. There's an, another set of icons there. Shift, right click, right here in the middle. This is called display set. I'm gonna demonstrate this. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit reset. I'm gonna zoom out a little bit. And let's say what I'd like to see is just a few elements from my screen and not turning on and off levels. I'm gonna go to my element selection, space bar, go into element selection. And then I'm gonna select this group of elements right here. Those selected elements, when I do a shift right click and I choose display set set, everything else gets turned off. And now I can clear the selection set by just left clicking in an open area. Now all I see is the elements that I had selected. Now if I wanna bring everybody back, I do a shift right click. The last icon, display set clear and that returns everything. This could be a very powerful tool for basically kind of decluttering your drawing at any given moment. It's also great for when you're patterning or trying to measure an area and there's a lot of crisscrossing elements, using that display set set can be very powerful. So hopefully you enjoyed this and we'll see you in the next video. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like. If you want to see more such series, consider subscribing to our channel. Thank you, and see you next time.